this is one demodulator module. Okay, so there is a very nice connector here. Well, this thing is spotted. And the coating is very hard. You can see it is uh, blue stuff. I will start uh, to place this stuff in an oven at a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. So maybe it will be possible to separate the internal here uh, from the metallic body. Otherwise, if it doesn't work, I will cut here the four edges. As you can see, I have removed the aluminum cover, so we can see the blue module. The coating is quite hard. It is very difficult to remove this coating. On that side, there is a black paint. Maybe next week I will get access to an X-ray machine. I will see. We can see on the screen the complete internals of one module. Now we can see four small power transistors here. We have two medium power transistors on the left and two others on the right. So we can see that they are mounted on dissipators. We can see the screws here. We can notice also the connections between the transistors and the PCB, which are done using small wires. We can see also the internals of the transistors here. Okay, so we can see that the collector corresponds to this terminal here, connected to the case of the transistors. This is the base in the middle, the emitter here. This little thing is actually a transformer. This is something classic in the designs of the 60s and 70s. Each transformer has six wires. We can see also two terminals twisted together and fitted inside a heat shrink tube here. We have another one here. We can see two capacitors. Okay, we can see the body of the capacitor here. Well, this is the internal. This thing is a resistor. Okay, there are several resistors, of course. Okay, two here, another one here. We have three resistors. This is a diode. Okay, so this is another transformer. A capacitor here, a resistor. This is another capacitor, another one. We have another transformer here. Transistor, a capacitor, a resistor. Okay, we can see the connector. So the connector is connected to the PCB using several wires. Okay, we can see these wires here. Okay, so the wires are connected here to several pads. So we have two large parts here. So I think these parts are power resistors. And here we have two parts which are not fitted. And we can see here two other transistors connected to the PCB also, using several wires here. You will see that it is not complicated to understand the purpose of this circuit in the middle here. So let's start with this one, for example. So we can see the base of this transistor here, connected uh, to this point here in the middle. The base is connected to this capacitor and also to two resistors. These two resistors are obviously the bias of this transistor. Okay, so this one is a coupling capacitor. So if we follow the other side of the capacitor, you will see that it is connected to one pad connected to the connector. So this is one input. Okay, so we can see also that the emitter is here. So the emitter is connected to this capacitor in series with this resistor and it is connected also to this resistor. So, so this is the emitter resistor which permits to set the gain at low frequencies and at high frequencies 
we have also this resistor which permits to increase the gain. So this line is obviously the ground. Okay, it is also connected okay, to this uh, resistor here, which is connected to the base. So we have the ground here. The second terminal of this resistor should be the power supply. You can see that the collector corresponds to this line here. This line is connected to the transformer here. And uh, there is another pin of the transformer which is connected to the power supply. And we can see that we have also this capacitor in parallel uh, to these two points. These two points correspond to the primary of the transformer here. So this is the tuning capacitor which permits to increase the gain probably around 400 Hz. Okay, so we have the secondary side of the transformer uh, here. Okay, we can see that we have here a resistor also connected to the power supply. So this resistor is connected to one point uh, here, which should be connected to the middle point actually of the secondary side of this transformer. Okay, and the middle point is connected also here to this diode, which is, which is connected to the ground. This diode permits to have a DC bias of 0.6-0.7 volt on both secondaries. Okay, so the cathode of the diode is here. Okay, so this is the middle point of the secondary side, and the two secondaries are actually here. They are connected to two pads here, which should be connected to two power transistors. I think these two transistors here. Okay. We can see also the other transistor is absolutely identical. It is the same circuit. Okay, so the emitter is connected here to this RC network in series. Okay, so we have also this resistor connected to the emitter, connected to the ground. We have the bias of the base here. We have the collector here connected to this tuning capacitor and connected to this transformer. We can see also the secondary bias using this diode connected to ground here and this resistor connected to the power supply here. Okay, and the two secondaries are here. Okay, these two points and we can see we have two wires connected on the left, so probably they are connected to the base of these two transistors there. So I think we have two identical circuits. We can see on the screen the complete schematic diagram of one demodulator module. There are two identical amplifiers, only one is visible on that page, the second one is below. Each amplifier is connected to a torque motor of the gyro. And this one, for example, is connected to the outer gimbal torque motor, so this permits to modify the position of the inner gimbal. Now we have already seen this schematic. There is a power stage here. Okay, so there are two resistors of 12 ohms connected between the emitters and the ground. So this permits to set the bias current of the final stage here. The input of the amplifier is here. Okay, so there is nothing special. On the board, there is something else which is on the left of that page. So this is the modulator. We can see the output of the modulator is here, and it is connected in series with the power supply of the amplifier. Here, there is a reference signal at 400 Hz, and the input of the modulator is this line. Actually, this is the DC voltage. It took me some time to do the reverse engineering of that circuit. It was not obvious. So we can see that there are two pairs of transistors here. The base of each transistor is driven using this transformer. For a given input phase here, only one pair of transistors is conductive. Let's assume, for example, that these two transistors are on. In that case, the other transistors are off. Okay, so if this transistor is on, this one also, so that means that this point is connected more or less to this one. Okay, so in that case, if you suppose that this voltage is above this one, there will be here a voltage which will be below this one. So in that case, there will be at the output here a given phase. So if we consider the case now with an opposite phase at this input here, in that case, these two transistors are on. 
these two transistors are off and in that case this point here is connected to this point of the transformer in that case there will be a positive voltage across that winding in the case of this voltage more positive than this one and in that case there will be a phase reversal at the output here Okay, so in conclusion, at the output, there will be a signed signal. The frequency of that signal will be the frequency of the input here. So the, and the amplitude and the phase of that signal depends on the DC voltage here, actually on the difference of potential between the terminal L here and the terminal R. Okay, so this permits to modify the torque. So this will create an imbalance okay, on the AC voltage present on each collector here. And this creates actually a torque. So the torque can be modified using the input here. So, and therefore the position of the gimbal can be modified using a DC voltage here. So I don't know the exact purpose of that circuit in the complete guidance system. I think it was interesting to see exactly what is inside. And as you can see, it is possible to do the reverse engineering even if you don't have access to the parts. It took me approximately one complete day to do this uh, complete schematic diagram from the X-rays pictures. And thank you for watching and see you next time for another video. Bye bye.